welcome back to my channel. Um, this channel is for tech career and data. In today's video, I'm going to show you, you know, how to play with your data using Pandas, which is a Python package, and with the Excel, you know, helping you to understand the concepts. I'm going to have a link down below in the description to just uh, to explain how to install Jupyter Notebook. But Jupyter Notebook is pretty much the most common way of how um, data analysts or data scientists play with their data and manipulate with the data. And here you can see the orange box that has a new button. That's how you can create new uh, Python Jupyter Notebook files. So after you have created your uh, Jupyter Notebook Python file, this is what's going to show up. You'll have, you know, each boxes as like how you execute your Python code. And today we're going to focus on pandas. So you'll do import pandas as PD and then you'll uh, press shift enter. Then that's how you will be able to import a uh, Python pandas package. And then you can you know run more code and you have code by chunks so that it's easy to organize your code. So the two most commonly uh, used ways to get your data into your Jupyter Notebook is one, you can read your CSV file that you exported from somewhere, you downloaded from somewhere. Or the second way will be having all the credentials and details of a connection uh, to connect to your database directly in your Jupyter Notebook. And uh, you can run your queries and store it as a data set. The trick is that you, when you manipulate your data, you got to be very careful of like not trying to always name it the same thing like data frame, like DF here stands for data frame, because that way you're always overriding your data sets and you wouldn't be able to backtrace of like, you know, what the data uh, looked like before you made this manipulation. And it's very helpful, especially when you try to, you know, make sure that you didn't create any bugs throughout your process. So definitely recommend you don't name all your data sets the same name as DF or data frame. After you ingest your data sets into the Python, it's not like Excel where you can just see all the tabs and all the columns and rows. Um, and you'll just, you'll see nothing. So it'll be like how I'm demonstrating here with like Excel file of like maybe the the name of the t uh, data sets, but I don't know how it looks like. And the way to actually, you know, just show some data that just so you can make sure that your data was ingested correctly and making sure, you know, the column names are not all weird because of, uh, you know, the CSV file or something, then you can like, you know, you can actually get the top 10 rows of your data by running a code like DF, uh, which is your data sets, data frame dot head, then that will show you default is to show you the first 10 rows of your data, just to make sure that, you know, you have your data set is ready to go and it doesn't have any errors or problems. Or if you want to check more, you can also do DF dot head uh, parentheses with a number of rows you want to show. So a hundred will show a hundred rows that you need uh, to make sure that, you know, you don't have uh, weird values uh, for, you know, the top 100 rows of data. Then in Excel, you can do, you know, count of a column to check the number of rows, or you can, you know, simply highlight the column that you want to check. Uh, in Python, you can do exactly the same thing by uh, writing LEN, which stands for a length of your data frame to check number of rows that you have in your data frame, which is your data set. You know how when you try to use a pivot table of your orders uh, sheets just to see, you know, how many number of orders that each customer has made and you'll do this pivot table. And this is a very helpful way of just seeing, you know, what is going on with a lot of your columns that you have. And in Pandas, you can do exactly the same thing by doing DF which is your data frame, uh, brackets of uh, the, your column name and dot value counts parentheses. So this way you'll give you exactly how it shows in your pivot table of like the you know, DF parentheses or customer ID value counts will give you the same exact same results. You know how when you try to use a pivot table of your orders uh, sheets just to see, you know, how many number of orders each customer has made and you'll do this pivot table. And this is a very helpful way of just seeing, you know, what is going on with a lot of your columns that you have. And in Pandas, you can do exactly the same thing by doing DF, which is your data frame, uh, brackets of uh, the, your column name and that value counts parentheses. 
So this way, you'll give you exactly how it shows in your pivot table of like the you know DF parentheses or custom ID value counts. It'll give you the same exact same results. So after you have ingested your data, you want to, might want to make sure you know your data is stored as a right data type. So when you do any manipulation, you're not causing a lot of problems when you don't know what your data type is. So the most commonly, I guess, five uh, data types are you know the stream, the date, time, which allows you to do a lot of the date manipulations, and null is blank, and float is like you know has multiple decimals, and then you also have int as integers. So make sure that you are aware of all these data types. And when you run your code of, you know, data frame df dot d types, that'll actually tell you what exactly are the data types for each of your columns. And another way of uh, very, you know, quickly be able to summarize your data frame df is that you can run uh, df dot describe parentheses, and that will give you a lot of the, you know, like the overview of your basic stats of your columns. And if it's numerical, it will give you the count, the mean, the standard deviation, the minimum, the uh, 25th percentile and 75th percentile and median, and then also the max, which is very helpful when you're trying to see the distribution of your uh, column. And then for categorical data, it'll give you, you know, counts and unique values and top and frequency, uh, which also helps you to understand, you know, high level of like what's going on in your data frame. Before I jump into, you know, how do we handle the missing values and what can we do about it, uh, please make sure you subscribe to learn more about data, tech career, and machine learning in general of a high level overview. Um, please leave a comment below of like why you're interested in learning about data and what you're trying to do in your career. So whenever we play with any data, we always run into, you know, the data quality issue of some blanks, some nulls, just, you know, the data is just not available for some reason. And then, you know, what do we do when we see this problem, right? So when you ran your value counts, it will show you the number of blanks there in your columns, which will be helpful to know, you know, is this, are we supposed to just remove those? Or are we supposed to maybe replace those with like some other numbers that you need? So in this case, when you, you know, when you do your filter and try to filter out the blanks, the nulls, uh, you will do exactly the same thing, which is called drop NA. That will remove the blanks or NAs in your data frame, and that will help you to remove all the blanks in your data set. Or you might want to, you know, replace these blanks with some values that you think make more sense. For example, it might be blank because it's supposed to be zero. And your data set, when you're trying to, you know, merge them or join them, it's supposed to be zero, but it happened to be blank. So then you, in Excel, you will, you know, add, a, insert another additional column, and then trying to do, like, if logic to make sure that the blanks are replaced with zero, for example. And you can do exactly the same thing in Pandas by, you know, doing a DF dot fill NA. So you're filling with the blanks with either a zero or maybe a string of none or something, just so to make sure that, you know, it's, it's not available in your data sets, just to make it very clear. So uh, it will actually be calculated in when you try to, you know, do any data manipulation. So to summarize what we have talked about today, first we talked about you know how to use Jupyter Notebook and what is Jupyter Notebook. And second, we talked about you go, how do you get your data. First way is to get your CSV files downloaded from somewhere. And then, or you can also use SQL to run your query uh, that's directly connected to your database. That's also very useful. And then the third thing I talked about was summarizing your data or just to get a good understanding of like what is the data set you're working with because you want to make sure that your data set is exactly like the number of rows is correct, that you're not missing a lot of data, maybe it wasn't ingested correctly or the data types are wrong and you need to fix that. So, you know, a lot of like quick way of like summarizing your data sets when even with like the, you know, describe to make sure you have the basic stats knowledge of your data sets. And then the fourth thing I talked about was handling the missing data. Uh, you know, you can either filter them out by using drop and A, or you can do fill and A to make sure that those uh, blanks are filled with some other value like zero 